Greetings. Welcome to the November Open Forum. I'm Celeste Lynch, the Associate Executive Director here at the Original Campus, and I'm joined by some of my wonderful colleagues today as we begin to offer you some information that we think you will find helpful for the coming months. I do want to let you know that the next meeting that will be held is scheduled for December the 18th. That's Friday. That is scheduled for to be a town hall meeting at 11 a.m. We're not sure yet whether it will be filmed or live, but we do want you to know to mark that date, 11 a.m. on f December 18th, Friday. If you ever miss a meeting, you can go to the neighborhood website and view the meeting slides or the video. You would go up to management, under management, look under management presentations. And if you're looking for the slides, it would be under management and executive corner. And there it is there on the slide for you. I'm going to provide an update from the Associate Executive Director Department. And I'd first like to give you an update about the PEP policy. As we discussed at last month's meeting, we recently revised the PEP policy to look at buildings B through F and J. And we sent out a PET acknowledgement form to all of the residents living in those buildings. We asked on that form whether they support or object to their building becoming PET friendly. What you see here on the screen are the results from that survey. And we have no buildings that uh, wanted to become 100% pet friendly at this time. However, you can see the different results there in support of becoming pet friendly. The B building was 31%, C was 70%, D was 62%, E at 25%, F at 82% and J at 62%. A reminder about this is no building will become completely pet friendly until there are no residents living in that building who object. At that point in time, when there is no one else living there, then the building will become pet friendly. And now a management update. I have good news to share from a hiring perspective. Emilio Chaviano, our new director of ministry, was just able to hire a wonderful candidate, Jessie Duque. She'll be our part-time pastoral chaplain. Jessie is right now on the, involved in the onboarding process, and she will be joining us within the next several weeks. Once she does, we will make sure we get a communication out to all of you so that you can know more about her and give her a warm Moorings Park welcome. She, is, she does have a cert certificate in theology and biblical studies, and she has a certifi certification in police chaplaincy as well. She's also had a good amount of experience working in healthcare settings, and that was another reason we felt she would be a wonderful candidate because in her role, she will be working with residents that live in assisted living and at the chateau. Also, we have also announced Bern Geary has been awarded the, the uh, position of Orchid Terrace Administrator. Bern comes to us from the chateau. He is currently the executive assistant to Diana Bailey, the vice president of clinical services. He started off at the Chateau as an administrator in training, doing his internship. And he then became a licensed nursing home administrator and a licensed assisted living administrator. He has his bachelor's degree in business administration from Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont. We're thrilled to be working with Byrne over in Orchid Terrace. He starts on November the 30th. But he's really been over there actually all this week learning things. And I know he'll be a wonderful addition to Orchid Terrace. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the nurse navigator position. 
we're taking this opportunity since we uh, that position's been vacated to make a transition and that transition will be that the nurse navigator will now transition to become a licensed clinical social worker we felt a social worker would be a more appropriate position because with life's challenges they're not always just medical as you know life brings about many challenges as we age and we felt a licensed clinical social worker would be better suited to deal with the holistic approach and all of those challenges that come you know living in a setting such as this so we are in the interview process right now this position will no longer report to the vice president of clinical services it will report to operations to vice president of operations Ross Dickman and work very closely with myself and the executive directors at the other two campuses as we begin to uh, narrow down the search and award the the position to someone I will be sure to let all of you know uh, who our candidate is and make sure that you can have a chance to meet him or her communication is an important topic no matter what no matter where you live or work what organization you're in it's something that just really uh, can make or break an organization and we want to make sure that we're always communicating to our residents and to our partners to the very best of our ability I hear sometimes from our residents that they feel that they are not being communicated to and I want to make sure that everyone understands the best way for you to receive communications is through our, our resident neighborhood website memos updates are all loaded to that website on a timely basis and by going to the website you can view everything that's happening here at Moorings Park videos are also uploaded there as well one of the things I do hear is sometimes people uh, do not know how to access the website or, or not uh, computer savvy to get to the website we are looking at possibly offering some classes for that so stay tuned for more information I'm also happy to tell you that we have a new Moorings Park home channel Kayla is going to discuss that a little bit later so I won't get into that now but that will replace channel 2501 for emergency type messages we utilize informacast all of our residents are um, part of that process and you receive warnings such as tropical storm warnings and things of that nature when they're more of an emergency type situation through informacast that could be on your cell phone through a text through an email or your landline I'd also like to remind you about the Moorings Park emergency link I have that listed there for you that is a, a great resource if you're away out of town you can always check the link to see if there's anything important going on again it's usually uh, more of an emergent nature we do put the COVID updates there as well also a wonderful resource for your families you may want to let them know about that link so that they can check in uh, during times where they feel they might um, be concerned about you and they can check out that link to get the latest information with regard to families I'll also mention to you that I am certainly available to meet with your family or connect with your family I have residents who often introduce their children to me when the children are visiting it's a great way for them to put a face to a name and to be able to have someone they know they can contact uh, in the event they have any concerns or needs uh, and you are not able to uh, reach out to me they can help with that and so um, I have shared my email address there my phone number and certainly uh, you can let me know if you'd like me to reach out to them next I'd like to give you a sales update and we'll start here at the original campus so Moorings Park occupancy right now is at 86 percent we have seven additional scheduled move-ins through the end of the year Orchid Terrace 
has 60 of 69 AL and memory care units occupied at an 87% occupancy rate. The marketing team is hosting socially distanced prospect events for this campus during the month of November and will be held at the Country Club of Naples. Over at Moorings Park at Gray Oaks, our wonderful sales associate Karen Norbeck has moved over to be uh, working with that community. We now have 103 of 107 residences occupied. That's a 97.2% occupancy rate. One resident is sold, and the other two residences are on hold. Oakstone has 33 of 36 AL and memory care residents occupied, and that's at a 92% occupancy rate. They also are hosting a socially distanced membership event in November over at the Gray Oaks Country Club. Rachel Brune has joined the Moorings Park Grand Lake sales team. The first two phases are 77% occupied. Building K sales opened in mid-September and to date we have made six sales there and have three holds. The MPGL team has been hosting multiple socially distanced monthly prospect events and tours through the end of the year. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mitch Swanson, who is going to give you an update on holiday events coming up. Happy holidays, everyone, and tis the season to be merry. I'm excited to be here today to share with you some upcoming holiday events, events uh, in the month of December, starting off with a Moorings Park tradition since 1995. It's the Variety Show. We'll have a special edition this year with, um, it will be all on video and we'll have showings at the Sheffield Theater starting on Wednesday, December 2nd at 2 o'clock and Wednesday, December 9th at 2 o'clock as well. We're limited to 50 residents on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, and if you can't make it to the uh, Sheffield Theater showing, we will also have it available on the neighborhood website. The show is an hour and 30 minutes long. It features 30 minutes of new material filmed specifically for this year and also an hour-long best of series so we're really looking forward to kicking off the holiday events with the variety show another event that kind of kicks off our holiday season is the tree lighting party out at uh, chorus plaza unfortunately we will not be having that event like we have in the past but we will be having a special tree lighting holiday Moorings Park special. And it will be brought to you directly to your homes um, on TV and through the neighborhood website. It will feature an introduction from Dan, which he normally gives a, a nice uh, speech on Christmas traditions. We'll also have Victorian carolers singing, and you, you'll be able to follow along uh, with the lyrics of the carols um, on the screen. And unfortunately, this year, we won't be able to have the um, intimate and personal uh, check giving process from residents to partners that everyone appreciates so we will be able to film a special thank you from our partners to the residents also we're excited to announce that we will be going again on our victorian victoria park excuse me uh, trolley trip we go on this every year and it's a very popular trip um, this will be on monday december 7th and the trolley will be departing at the front of the clubhouse at six o'clock if you've never been to victoria park before it's a neighborhood that um, decorates all their homes um, in in holiday gear and um, you know there's a lot of traffic usually though all the naples community will drive through the neighborhood and it's uh very convenient to be able to just kick back in a trolley um you don't have to worry about traffic or anything the trolley will take you to and from the event so if you're interested in signing up for this please give us a call at 643-9104 
Another trip that we have planned that's always popular in the Naples community is the night lights at the Naples Botanical Garden. This will be on Monday, December 14th, with the bus departing at 6 o'clock. Um, it's a self-guided tour with a fair amount of walking. Price is $25 per person, and we recommend for both of these trips that you have an early dinner. Um, for the night lights at the Botanical Garden, they will have the Fog Cafe open with a limited menu. Um, so that is an option for you as well. Um, but we don't expect to be on campus until 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. Um, so obviously, it would be best to plan an early dinner for those nights if you plan on attending. To RSVP for this event as well, please give us a call at 643-9104. Also happy to announce that the Bower Chapel Concert Series will be kicking into gear again, starting with the ever popular each year uh, Trinity by the Cove Christmas Carol Concert. Um, this will be on Monday, December 21st at, of course, the Bauer Chapel, and we'll have two shows this year because we are limited to 50 residents per show. And so we'll have a morning show at 11 a.m. and then an afternoon show at 2 o'clock. Um, we will have tickets available for each of these shows at the Clubhouse front desk that are available for pickup two weeks in advance, which would be uh, Monday, December 7th. We'll have a yellow ticket for the morning show of 11 a.m. and a blue ticket for the afternoon show at 2 o'clock. So um, tickets are mandatory for entry, and we do ask if you grab a ticket to, and you don't plan on attending, please turn it back into the front desk so we can accommodate other residents. The wellness department also has some fun events planned for you uh, in the coming weeks. Starting off with our Thanksgiving hangover bocce game. This is a, a way to work off the turkey and stuffing and a fun way to uh, socialize with your neighbors. This will be on December 4th from noon till 1.30. Also, we have our door decorating contest, which gives residents an opportunity to show off their creative side. Um, this will be all throughout the month of uh, December that you'll be able to um, construct your door. And judging will take place on December 17th, and we'll have winners featured in the weekly newsletter shortly after that. Also, if you need help with gift wrapping um, and or online shopping assistance, uh, the wellness department will be offering uh, every Monday in December leading up to Christmas um, in the former Max Wellness space, they will be offering this service to you for free um, from 3 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Um, and for more information on any of these events mentioned, um, th this information will be available to you in your weekly newsletter that's in your mailboxes today, and it's also available on the weekly, uh, excuse me, the neighborhood website. Next up with a dining update is Richard. Well, hello, everyone. It's Richard Cesaro, Vice President of Dining. How is everyone today? And uh, a lot of preparation to come up here, glasses and things, so I'm ready to go. I wanted to uh, start with an update on our uh, team. And I think this is important because our managers and, and supervisors and frontline team members interact with you every day. And it's an important part of uh, the experience in our dining rooms and our in-home dining process. So I'm pleasure to announce that Clubhouse Dining Room Manager Nicole Paulus has joined us. Nicole, if you got, had a chance to meet her, she's out in the dining room. She has a very uh, uh, easygoing style, very approachable, and I've heard some great feedback so far about her. So I'm very happy uh, that she's on board with us. She has experience in, uh, came to us from uh, Capital Grow. We have a new sous chef change in Park Grill, Alexandria Chandler. And Alexandria is uh, a Unidyne team member that's been with the company for a fair amount of time. And she's worked in senior uh, CCRC communities for the last 10 years. She's, the, she's also a delight, and you can uh, see her at Park Grill. And again, when we t I think I've spoken in our open forums before about hiring from within and how important it is to 
uh, both organizations, Morris Park and Unidine, to cultivate that culture. And I just wanted to uh, let you know, and I think I've mentioned it previously, that Nick Boone has been promoted to TRIO Dining Manager. Nick is a six-year team member here, hardworking, just dedicated young man, and uh, very, very, very happy to have him. I also wanted to provide an organizational chart so that you can go back uh, and take a look at this video if you sometimes want to see how we're organized for Unidyne. It's pretty elaborate structure. Um, I've included the uh, top line uh, VP and, uh, uh, um, and president, including myself, and then I've included uh, Gray Oaks and uh, I've included Gray Oaks and Morris Park Regional Campus, but that's uh, to focus on that. I just wanted to also point out that Lourdes Solomon was also an in-home dining team member that was promoted uh, into that pr position for billing and catering. So Lourdes, another uh, great example of hiring from within and cultivating that culture. I also wanted to let you know about. Uh, time slots and reservations and just a, a quick review that we still have openings at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. I urge you to uh, you know to call if you're in the dining room dining and you want prior to dining or after you want to approach the podium ask the host or supervisor if there's any room would be more than happy to try to accommodate you same for Park Grill uh, also I get a lot of questions about the terraces at Trio and, and Park Grill and understandably the weather hasn't been great it's uh, just turned a little bit now but you can make that uh, uh, request through Resi and you can also uh, change your reservation if you walk in and it's a beautiful night and we have availability to accommodate you outside we can certainly do that the next uh, big thing and I think we'd, it's sort of the theme of our presentation today is one of our major holidays Thanksgiving is coming up uh, a little unusual in, in its uh, current environment. However, we are going to have uh, great food and uh, great service on Thanksgiving Day in Trio and in Clubhouse Seasons. And I also want to make one special mention, and I'm, I'm putting that communication out today in uh, in-home dining bags and on the neighborhood website, is that the menu that's available for Thanksgiving is only the special menu, so it's not the full in-home dining menu. So that's, that's an important note. Uh, just again, holiday meal locations, uh, trio and clubhouse seasons, 75% occupied seatings, 11.30, well, seating times or reservation times between 11.30 and 3.30 p.m. Residents, uh, residents only, I think we've covered that. Uh, In-home dining is an option up to six people. It's just that li it's that special menu for the day, and uh, it's going to be just uh, great menu items. I think you're going to enjoy them, and of course, please join us for this special occasion. Gotten a lot of feedback on Park Grill, and uh, we've you know moved from 50% to 75%. We've keeping the, kept the restaurants open. And it's understandable that the menu uh, on Park Grill can sometimes become a little bit stale to the residents here, and we completely understand that. So we're taking a few steps, a few small steps now to change some things, and it's a longer vision on where we want to see Park Grill go. But we're going to uh, work on the frequency of menu changes, inconsistency with quality, uh, desire to for a separate lunch menu right now we're working to see to test a very nice uh, center of the plate one page uh, lunch menu and then again go to dinner dinner menu items so that the two of them don't um, aren't on the same menu uh, need for higher culinary skills uh, and consistency here we uh, Al could Alexandre in there but we're going to uh, actively look for uh, an executive chef for the park grill to elevate the, the menu there and to, to provide more premier dining options there. And this is just a little process action plan about how we sort of go about doing that. And we've got, uh, when we start to test menu items, we will use that through the running specials, get your feedback on those. 
uh, define the distinction between lunch and dinner. I think that's imp important that the uh, speed of service, uh, table presentation, possibly uh, an element of music, and uh, elevate the beverage and wine program at Park Grill. So these are uh, more longer term vision for where we want to take Park Grill. We'd like it to uh, compete with our other restaurant trio so that we can uh, provide that type of and that style of food to more residents at Morris Park. Uh, also, uh, as I had mentioned before, that uh, we would uh, have a primary executive chef at Park Grill. So as usual, I, I close with always saying I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your understanding. I know this is your home. And our, our, our goal is to deliver the best service and best food. And we haven't, we haven't stepped away from that commitment. All right, thank you. Randy Powell. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy holidays. Um, let me get to my slides. So my uh, couple of slides I have to present today really have a strong golf theme to it. But first, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about the holidays, and especially as they relate to facility services. Uh, the first thing I want to bring up is I know many of you have uh, trees that you want to put up in your common area of your buildings. I ask that you please put in a work order if you need assistance with pulling those trees out of storage as well as setting them up uh, and maintenance technicians can assist with that. I do want to remind everyone that we only assist with the assembly but not the decorating of those trees. Um, during that request for assistance, we will not loan out ladders, tools, or extension cords uh, for that. That's a responsibility of the buildings or the residents. Uh, finally, on personal trees, trees that go up inside your own units, um, we can assist with pulling those out of storage, uh, but again, we will not assemble or decorate those trees. Uh, there is a service on campus that's provided to Moorings Park residents, the VIP services. They can assist with many of these services from decorating, holiday cards, uh, shopping, gift wrapping, and so on. Their numbers listed there on the slide as well as where you can find them on the Moorings Park site. Uh, lastly, a quick word about holiday safety. Um, please be safe this holidays. Uh, on the slide are the 12 days of safety. A lot of great points in these 12 blocks. Uh, please review it, stay safe, and have a safe holidays. So uh, again, a strong theme of golfing for the presentation. Um, so the first one is a putting green. This was a project that covers our current chipping and putting area. Um, and after looking at the cost associated with the routine maintenance and upkeep of this space, along with the utilization, uh, we've decided to pursue alternatives to natural turf in these locations. Uh, what we're looking at and designing towards is in placing uh, artificial putting surface where we currently have the, the larger uh, natural turf putting surface. Um, we're looking at initially only using half of that space, placing half of that with artificial turf, and then um, connecting the two with a, um, a nice walkway through the middle here and as well as enhanced landscaping along the fringes of this area. Up here in the north area where we have our chipping green, uh, what we will be doing there is removing the chipping area, contouring this space to remove the bunker and the, uh, the putting green that you chip towards. Residents can still practice uh, chipping in that area, it's just there'll be no green to chip towards. Uh, next, Lee, uh, again, keeping with that golf theme, is the uh, project to install a golf simulator here on campus. Um, 
this is the same uh, make and model of golf simulator that will go into our new property, Moorings Park at Grand Lakes. And where we're going to place that is at the Center for Healthy Living. Uh, so this, oops. This space in here is where our new selection center is. So just to the north of that, where we had the old selection center, we'll be placing a golf simulator that's manufactured by TrackMan. Uh, comes highly recommended, very state-of-the-art system. Uh, we'll have some soft seating amenities behind that space. And I think it's going to be a very enjoyable event um, for those looking to uh, practice their golf. With that, that's all I have, and I'll be followed by Kayla in Hotwire. Good afternoon. I'm going to be providing a brief update on the current status of our hot wire installation here on the original campus. Last month we reported that we were approximately 30 to 40 percent done with IL installations. I'm happy to report that as of today we are approximately 80 percent done with those installations. Yesterday our installations began at Orchid Terrace for internet and uh, television service. Telephones will follow just a little bit later. And we're hopeful to start the Chateau installations on or about uh, December 4th. We will be returning to install the, the rest of the independent living installations following the Chateau. The majority of these include um, our ghost residents or residents who may not have been available during their original installation time. So we have not forgotten about any of you. We will be reaching out to you to reschedule or hotwire will on behalf of Moorings Park. As Celeste alluded to earlier in the presentation, I'm very happy to announce the Moorings Park Home Channel. This channel uh, is now available for residents who have been transitioned over to Hotwire. As you may have noticed, that channel 2501 has gone away. The channel on the original campus launched this past Monday, the 16th. And it does give you the ability to view uh, emergency alert information on behalf of the community, as well as any past videos such as the wellness or fitness videos, our open forums, and also any town meetings. The neighborhood website will remain our primary source of information for all residents. So while we will be posting certain information on the Moorings Park Home Channel, we do highly encourage you to check the neighborhood website frequent and often to get all of the information that we have available to you. For residents looking to access the channel, there is a button with a home icon at the very top center of your Hotwire voice remote. Simply click that, then select the original campus for the campus specific information. International calling. We've gotten a couple of residents that have asked for additional details regarding international calling from Hotwire. Hotwire does require that any of their clients, including our residents here at Moorings Park, complete an international calling request form prior to being able to place any international calls. This is done to unlock international calling on your specific landline and only needs to be done one time. The form can be found on our Hotwire launch page. The web address is available on the slide and can also be uh, obtained through the slides on the management corner after this presentation. The form is signed electronically and does take approximately 24 to 48 hours for Hotwire to process, at which time you are free to dial internationally. This process is in place through Hotwire to ensure that all of their clients, including our residents, are aware of the additional fees uh, that will be forthcoming, as well as how that will show up on a bill that goes to you directly. For residents that are looking for other options, potentially those free options that are available to you, our Chief Information Officer, Tony Marks, did make a nice memo that consolidates a lot of information related to international calling, including uh, free services that can be utilized through your smartphone or tablet device. This memo it was written by Tony on October 12th and can be found in the Information Technology Mailbox on the Neighborhood website. 
Our launch account manager, Adam Brockup, continues to do his on-site office hours every Thursday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. here on the original campus. He can be found on the third floor of the CHL in the old Max Wellness location. And he's ava available there to answer any questions, field any concerns you might have, or uh, get you in touch with somebody that can troubleshoot informate any problems you may be having in your home. He also is available to schedule any fission education appointments if you haven't already done so, or if you might benefit from an additional session. For those that are looking for assistance on days when Adam is not here for his office hours, whether that be question with billing, scheduling a first or maybe even a second or third fission education appointment, looking to add additional services to your bill, or any issues within your home, including those related to your voice mailbox, your, we encourage you to call 217-3262 and select option two. That is the Hotwire customer service line and they can, um, in most cases, remotely uh, troubleshoot and fix any issues you might be having. And if they're unable to do so, they will dispatch a technician to your location. Thank you so much and I'll be followed by Celeste for the wrap up of this town hall. Thanks to all of my colleagues for sharing that valuable information today for our November open forum. In summary, I'd just like to review a few things. The most important, of course, is the COVID-19 virus, which continues to have all of us on very high alert. We are seeing in the news rising positivity rates here in Collier County, across the state of Florida, and certainly across the United States. However, there is a silver lining. The news about vaccines is very promising and we look forward to learning more about that as they are released. We cannot let our guard down. However, we really must remain vigilant when it comes to all of the precautionary measures, hand washing, social distancing, and wearing your mask. I especially implore this of all of you during the holiday time. With Thanksgiving upon us, I know visitors will be coming in to visit with their family and friends. Residents may be going somewhere, out to a restaurant, that kind of thing. Please be sure to follow all the precautionary measures. Before I close, I'd also like to take this opportunity to wish all of our residents of the Jewish faith a happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah begins on December 12th and ends on December 18th, and we won't have another meeting until the 18th, so we wanted to wish all of you a happy Hanukkah. With that, I'll close our meeting today. On behalf of all Moorings Park, we wish each and every one of you a safe and wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.